Hi everyone, Dr. David Culley here with Synergy Wellness. We have a patient here that um, found me on YouTube, but that's not important. What's important is what he's been through. So he uh, went to a chiropractor or two. One of them did x-rays and missed something on the x-ray. Now, depends on what you miss, and x-rays are very difficult to read. They're not easy, but Mark here has what we call a spondylolisthesis. And if you guys don't know what that is, this here is a spondylolisthesis. It affects about 6% of the population, and basically it's a forward slippage of the vertebra. And I've done tons of videos, not tons, but I've done a bunch of videos on this exact condition. What I wanna do is discuss how this is treated. And so you, if you have a spondylolisthesis and you go to a chiropractor and he does certain things, you may want to avoid that chiropractor and see somebody else and I'll tell you why. So, Mark here, spondylolisthesis wasn't diagnosed on the first set of x-rays, then you had an MRI? Uh, MRI. Then the orthopedist found it or the second orthopedist? The uh, second orthopedist. So the first ortho, the first chiro missed it, the second ortho caught it, and then the second chiro had known you had been diagnosed and you went to him. Okay. So when I asked him some questions, it concerns me. So number one, with a spondylolisthesis, the vertebra shifts forward. Okay. There is a muscle that's on the side of the vertebra and when it's, and, and then it radiates out to the front and into the hip. It's the only muscle that connects the spine, the lumbar spine to the leg bone the psoas muscle, and I've done a bunch of videos. Make sure you watch those, because how to balance them, how to strengthen, stretch, all that. We've done a few videos on that, but he had never been contacted here on his stomach to the, uh, just slightly about an inch, inch and a half lateral to his belly button and down. That's the only way to get to the psoas muscle. It's the only way to release it. There's no other way. You could do it with him on their side, but you have to reach in here. You can't do it from the back. So that's number one he didn't have done. And then the first chiropractor, he said that he thinks made it worse because he put him on traction. Nothing against that chiropractor, but he didn't know that he had a spondylo. If you know you have a spondylolisthesis, not spondylolysis, but a spondylolisthesis, and if it's a lytic, if it's fractured, that as well. You do not want to go on traction where it stretches, strap your legs in and your waist and it stretches you out. You may not get off that table or you may be cursing that doctor out after you get off that table. How bad was it after you had the traction done? Um, yeah, it definitely increased in intensity. Okay. So, uh, and he was already really acute in pain. So you can imagine what that feels like. The last thing you want to do as a practitioner is make it more difficult for them to get off that table. Now, sometimes that happens with Cox technique, the first visit, but after that, um, and then after a few hours, it really eases up. So we're releasing his psoas in here. His psoas is much tighter on the left side. And when we put his arms up, I can tell his wrists, this right wrist elongates about three inches past the left one. So that's one psoas test. I'm not going to test him muscular because it could aggravate him, but he's definitely tight here. So we're releasing the psoas muscle. And then we also did Cox flexion distraction technique. He had been adjusted by being put on his side. Now, that's not the preferred way to be adjusted with a spondylolisthesis, okay? A forward slippage of the vertebra. He has it L4 on L5, but it's more common to have it on L5 over the sacrum, to have that spondyl or that forward slippage. It affects only 6%, as I said, but I think it probably affects a little bit more than that because we see it a lot in here. And you do not want to put them on their side and do a lumbar roll. If you do that, you only want to adjust the sacrum, the, the sacroiliac joint. But there's still some rotation and torsion that goes up into the lumbar spine from L5, L4, all the way up into, and in, in even a little bit, depending on the doctor, to the thoracic spine. So lumbar roll, putting you on your side, not the best technique for spondylolisthesis. So the second doctor in Midtown Manhattan, I'm not going to mention names because I told Mark I wouldn't, and I just don't do that. But he put him on his side and he did that. So he's probably not certified in Cox 
technique. So, and I've done a bunch of videos on Cox technique, flexion distraction technique, and what that's good for. It's the gold standard for pre and post-surgical disc herniations, disc bulges, spondylolisthesis, and spinal stenosis, just to name a few. Okay. You okay? So that's what we did first. We did not put him on your side or on his side. So if you have a spondylolisthesis and your chiropractor puts you on your side and bends your top leg and, you know, like, like this, and then uh, puts his hand on the low back and, and does that. Again, just pray that it's helpful because it is not the preferred technique. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you guys so much. If you got anything from this video, or even if you just like this view of the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building, give me a like and don't forget to subscribe. Appreciate you guys.